So we're off to Border Fisheries today and to the Match Lake. Um, by the time we've actually got up and got going this morning, um, it might be quite busy when we get there. So I've no idea really what kind of peg we're going to fish on, which side of the lake it's going to be. We'll just have to see what happens when we get there. So as you can see, it's only down the road. We'll be there in a few minutes. See you on the bank. Good morning everybody, my name is Adam Shilton from AS Fishing TV and we're here today on Bay Malton Border Fisheries Match Lake. I'm um, currently sitting at the moment on the car park side um, and today really we're talking about uh, lots of things that you guys have asked when you've commented, when you've written to us with questions and messaged and, and social media and all that kind of thing and you wanted to know a little bit more about the methods uh, that I use on the Match Lake, what works well in different times of year. So that is the aim of the day really today. So I've done some footage on the other side of the lake, the other side of the island where it's a lot shallower. And then today we're gonna to get a little bit on this car park side, which is a lot deeper. So this side tends to be a bit better for winter, really. Um, generally speaking, the other side for the summer with a bit shallower water and the carp seem to move into that area and, and cruise around and sort of stay there a little bit more. But you can still, you know, if you don't wanna to walk too far, you wanna get off the car, the car park, which is just here, you can come to this, these pegs here on this side and you can still, using these methods, have plenty of fish, plenty of action, plenty of sport, and that's what it's all about. You catching fish and enjoying your fishing. Here it goes. Okay, so um, pellet waggler on the match lake at Border Fisheries. So, uh, the, the, you know, it, the biggest thing with pellet waggler fishing is reg the busier you are, the harder you work, the, the more you'll catch fish, okay? And um, you've really got to hone the fish into to where it is that your float's landing and making sure that you kind of get in the same spot each time. And it does require a bit of practice because you can't clip up when fishing the pellet waggler because most of your bites come as soon as that pellet's hit the water, that floats hit the water, 
and, and just as you sort of resting your rod to pick your catapult up, sometimes bang, you know, floats under and the fish is on straight away, as you can see in the video. So, you know, keep busy, keep feeding. Um, so we'll talk really about uh, setup first. So again, um, similar to the feeder rod really, I've got a pellet waggler, um, a power pellet waggler rod. And again, using 10 foot, because we're not casting far uh, at all. The line again is Preston's Innovations, six pounds um, in old money. Um, and it's the, the, the specialized uh, float line so that it, um, you know, can sit on top of the water quite nicely. And it, again, I find it works really, really well. Um, got loads and loads of confidence in it and it, it just does the job that you need to do. I'm really, really happy with it. Real, again, very similar um, to that as what I talked about on the feeder. Something that will do the job, okay? Not too big, not too small. Um, I do like to use one that's got a good drag on it um, for pellet waggler because obviously, you know, when you get the fish close in by the, by the, the net and it's coming to net in your time, you just need, you know, something to absorb those lunges if you've got a, a really good fish on, on the business end. Um, so in terms of setup with the rod, and again, like I said with the rod before, nice through action as it goes through it. You know, it's, it's got that bit of power about it, but it's perfect for casting. It's quite rigid, um, but it's quite soft as well when you get into those fish and you can see the bend in the rod in the film. So I always start off about 18 inches um, between um, the hook and the actual float itself. Now, as you can see, the, the attachment I use, there's lots out there on the market. Okay, I just use a nice little attachment. Some people use float stops, which are absolutely fine. Um, I've got stops on this particular one just because I wanted that little bit of weight um, under the float. Okay, and it just means that I can swap and change the float as I see fit. So this one is a, a six gram Garbolino with the disc um, at the bottom as well, just so it stops it from diving, you know, so it's it's fishing as soon as it hits the water. As it goes in, plop like that with the pellet behind it, which is here, okay, it's fishing straight away. All right, and again, with the disc on there as well, it just means that it becomes a little bit more self hooking So if that fish takes that pellet, sucks it in, there's a little bit of resistance from the disc. It means it, it a lot of the time it will hook itself and again, fish on, especially if it's, fish, if it's swimming away from you, okay. Um, I always use a hook length on the loop to loop. So my hook length is always um, lighter than my main line, just so that, you know, if you do get the, 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 a snap or anything like that, fish is only tailing um, around a tiny little bit of line. Um, and also the barbless hooks means that, um, you know, the hooks are gonna come out anyway. I always use barbless hooks. I even regardless of, of anywhere, I use barbless hooks everywhere I go fishing. I never use barbless at all. And I fish that either on a lasso or on a band as well. So this particular one, you can see there, um, is a size 60 um, barber's hook with, with a bait band on it. Okay, so in terms of floats, like I said, there is lots and lots out there on the market. So this is the one that I used in the video. Um, I do sometimes use something a little bit smaller, a little bit shorter. Okay, so this is one of the Guru ones with the interchangeable tips, so you can change it, you know, yellow and black and stuff like that. And again, there is a small little disc at the bottom. And um, this one again is a six gram, but I've also got the four as well. So you can add something a little bit lighter. If you just want to kind of sneak that pellet in, fish it being a little bit harder to catch, um, you can sw swap and change depending on what you want to do on a day. So don't, again, don't be afraid. There's loads out there on the market. Um, have a little look, get some, try them out, see how you, see how you feel. So the biggest thing really um, for me in terms of waggler fishing is the feeding, okay? And, you know, one of, one of the, the most important things is, is your catapult, all right? So you must be comfortable and confident with your catapult. So that, again, this is a Guru one. It's absolutely great, nice, simple pouch that keeps the groupings of the pellets together. Now, a lot of the time when I'm shallow fishing with a pole, I'll feed either four or six mil pellets when I tend to start off with the pellet waggler, I'll always feed eight mils. Um, they, they weigh a little bit more, which means I can group them slightly tighter together and they give a much better kind of plop as they enter the water. And it's it's like ringing a dinner bell, isn't it, for the fish, they, they know that that bait's going in. And they only feed about three at a time, you know, sometimes even two, because obviously I want them to take my hook bait that is uh, going through the water as opposed to the freebies. So I'll feed a lot more to start with, and then as I start to get, you know, fish circulating in the area, 
I'll, I'll cut it down to two or three eight mil pellets at a time, okay? And generally speaking, and you'll see in the video, is I'll feed, so I'll have the rod by me, I'll feed out to my, to my spot, okay? I'll then pick up my waggler rod, I'll keep hold of my catapult, I'll cast, and I'll cast about a meter and a half past my feed, all right? And I'll just feather the line on the reel as it goes through, so the, the float lands first and the pellet lands behind it in a nice straight line, and that stops any tangles, which is really, really important. I'll let that, once that's hit the water, I just leave it for a minute, okay? And I literally, like, like with the pole, I trap the rod. I'll do it here for you now, okay? So I'll cast in, in it goes, feather it down, okay? And then I'll trap the, the rod between my knee and my elbow, as you can see there. And again, just like with the pole, it just means that I can feed really, really easy. I can pick up my feed out of my bait box, pop it into my pouch, and just like with the pole, pushing it away from me, okay? I can feed just like that, nice and simple. So I'll feed, okay? And then I'll just twitch the float or reel the float back into that group of feed. So I fed the same time over twice over the same spot. I fed twice over the same spot and then I pull the float into it if I've not had something when it's landed the first time, okay? And then often you get a bite there as well, okay? If I get no bite at that point, I'll feed again. So the same thing again, trapping the rod, out it goes on the same mark and then I'll switch it again. Not a lot, but just a little bit. So I'm kind of getting three attempts, three feeds and three attempts of the fish to take my hook bait per cast. If I've got nothing on that one, okay, I'll then reel in, okay, and repeat the process again. But before I cast out, before I cast out, feed, okay, everything's ready, cast out, bump, off it goes, it lands, and again, hopefully you get that fish pretty much as it hits the water. And you can, as you can see from, from that process, it's, it's, you get into a rhythm and it makes it a bit easier, but it's really, really important that you keep that feed going in. You've got to keep that feed going into the water because not only do you need to attract the fish to the area, but you've got to hold them up in that, in the, that depth as well. You want them to be sitting, you know, up between a foot and 18 inches deep, okay? Okay, so the last thing I want to mention is, is just moving the depth. Okay, so I start at about 18 inches, sometimes two foot, depending on the conditions, essentially. As you can see on the filming day, it was really, really sunny. So I started at 18 inches. Um, and basically, if I'm casting amongst fish and feeding and I'm not getting the take, I'll tend to shallow up six inches, four inches, six inches. So I ended up coming down to a foot, which is what you can see there at the moment. Um, and that was the optimum depth on the day. Any shallower and it starts to get a bit dodgy with tangles. Um, because obviously the, the pellet is landing quite close to the float. So you just got to be a bit careful with that. But I got it down to a foot. Um, it just meant that the, as soon as that pellet was hitting the water behind the float, pop like that, they were taking the bait really, really quickly. So don't be afraid, you know. And again, if you stop catching when you're doing that, it might be that they dropped a little bit in the water. A lot of anglers, they, they tend to slow their feed down when they're catching. Um, in a match situation, obviously you can't afford to do that so you'll, the fish will move away from you. But if, if you do slip into that little habit, just, you know, put the depth back on again. Go back to 18 inches, try again. You'll still pick fish up. They've just dropped a little bit in the water, generally speaking, because you slowed down your feed. So you increase your feed rate, so it's still the same amount, three pellets, four pellets at a time, eight mils. You increase the, the amount of times that it's going in um, and it'll bring the, the, the fish back up in the water again so you can, you can catch them that a little bit easier. Okay, that is Pellet Waggler Fishing.
gonna start off with the feeder and talk a little bit about the setup that I use um, on, on the particular video that you're, that you're looking at. So I'm gonna start with, with the rod at first. So I can talk about brand names and things like that, you know, until the cows come home. But the point is you need something that you're gonna be confident in, that you're comfortable with, and it's gonna do the job that you're, you're, you're hoping it's gonna do, okay? So in terms of the, the cast to the island in most places on the match lake, um, a 10 foot you know, feeder rod will do the job. Um, some of the wider parts I'd prefer to use 11, but on the particular video I've, I've been using this, this 10 foot feeder rod. So it's a power feeder rod, 10 foot, really, really nice um, soft through action. So you need that to be able to cushion um, the lunges of the fish, you know, for these big carp, especially the bigger ones when they pick it up and pick the feed up and they run the way they do. Lots of power in, in, in the first section, so you've got a little bit of little bit of oomph if you need it, you know, to bring those fish under control. But plenty, plenty of softness going through, through, okay, through the rod, through the action. Um, tip itself um, that I use on a day is a two ounce tip, uh, and the feeder uh, that I'm using as well um, is a, is a, a Guru hybrid. Um, so this one is in 24 grams. Um, I very rarely use anything that is much bigger than that, to be honest. Um, it's just the size that I use depending on how much bait I want to put on the feeder so I do change my mind a little bit on those things okay um, but for that kind of weight you know casting that kind of distance a two ounce tip absolutely fine and um, no problems whatsoever okay um, reel again you need a, a decent reel not not over big but something that is going to do the job um, you know this one in particular is a browning um, on mainline I'm using the, the Preston's um, what is basically six pound in old money main line and it's the feeder um, sinking line as well which is really really good really really like it you know it's got good durability um, it casts really really nicely and I'm really really happy with that and again the, the, the you know the size of the reel you, you need to be able to retrieve this feeder reasonably well because you're going to be casting in the summer you know every two and a half three minutes at the very very most um, but at the same point not something overpowered um, that's going to unbalance the setup that you've got okay so that's the main line um, Okay, so the actual the actual feeder itself. Um, rules here are that they've got to be free running. So this one, again, it's the Guru, free running. Um, no issues whatsoever with that. So if anything happens, the, you know, the, the line snaps, the, the fish will not be left with, with the feeder. And then onto a hook length. Now, club rules here um, mean it's a four inch hook length. Using this method in other places where there's not a hook length limit, um, it depends on what I'm doing for carp. I tend to go three inches, maybe four, depending on the size. The bigger the fish, uh, you know, if you're targeting fish that are eight pound, you know, a go, then a four inch hook length is absolutely fine. Um, if it's F1s only, you know, pound to two and a half pound, I tend to go to a, a two and a half, maybe three inch at the very, very most, um, just so that that pickup is a little bit easier for them. So as soon as they suck it in, they're gonna feel the resistance of the feeder straight away. And obviously the next thing you know your, your, your tips going around absolutely fantastic which you'll see in the video so the, the length of hook length in normal circumstances i do change depending on what what fish i'm catching um but you know generally speaking um, well all, always for here for border fisheries it is the four inch hook length so just make sure if you're doing it on the match league here or anyone else with border fisheries you still abide by that rule for the moment okay so that's what i use in terms of the feeder setup now the only thing i wanted to talk about was was clipping up you know when you're fishing tight to a feature when I actually um, start clipping up I don't do it with the feeder I just use the bomb obviously the, the, both the, the Guru and the Preston ICS um, have got interchangeable stems so I just pop a, um, a 15 gram sometimes a 20 gram depending on, on the distance um, cube on there you know bomb on there uh, no hook length nothing like that and I use that to get my distance uh, and clip up and, and mark it that way and just make sure obviously when you're casting out you follow your, your target through to where you want to land as it's coming into land get your, your rod back up again to 12 o'clock position nice straight in the air and obviously the balance of rod that you've got will then cushion the entry um, as the feeder lands into the water and it gives it that nice little plop effect um, and you can see that in some of the slow motion so just make sure you clip up that way don't clip up using a feeder you know use the bomb it's a little less disturbing as it's going in as well because it sometimes it'll take you a few goes just to make sure you do that and obviously just be aware as well if you're casting in a very high loop um, for overhanging trees um, we tend to find at 
the match lake there's quite a lot of overhanging trees so you do need to you know cast the feeder out a little bit of force and it flies a little bit flatter in the air rather than in an arch okay and again bringing that rod up to 12 o'clock so it hits the clip and the rod the softness of the rod and the tip will cushion that landing so that you get that nice entry in the water and obviously the feeder lands flat edge down onto the water so that you, your bait arrives on the bottom in the parcel that you're imagining it to be okay so that's feeder fishing on the match lake as you can see it's fantastic keep um keep casting in you know on the on the video when i filmed that day um, i was casting in every every two minutes to start with um and then I, it got to about every three and a half once i got a bit of bait down and as you can see we were catching fish really really quickly so give it a go and try you know alternating hot baits things like that as well change different things different pellets different bandons all those kind of things see what you what works on the day don't be afraid to, to try if you're sitting there with a the feeder out with no indications generally speaking you need to change something so don't be afraid to do it okay that's feeder fishing give it a go